this tutorial, we will guide you through the process of sizing and assembling a Thomas splint, applying skin traction, and securing a patient in the splint. Sizing and assembling the Thomas splint. Start by measuring the patient's uninjured leg. Measuring the uninjured side avoids unnecessary pain and discomfort. Measure the ring size. Use a tape measure to measure from the groin, slightly oblique. In this case, the measurement is 62 centimeters. Measure the inside leg length. Measure from the groin to the heel. Here, it is 74 centimeters. Now, choose the appropriate ring size. The possible options here are size two, up to 53 centimeters, but this is too small. Size three, up to 70 centimeters. This is slightly larger, which is preferable to accommodate swelling and prevent pressure damage. Select the splint sling. These are available in large, medium and small. In this case, we are using a medium size. Assemble the leg supports. Assembling the sling. Lay out the foam pads. and hook and loop straps on a flat surface. Proper placement is crucial. Avoid spaces between foam pads to prevent tissue herniation and pressure problems. Avoid excessive overlap, which can create pressure points. A slight overlap is ideal. Attach the sling. Start from the bottom end, wrapping as you go, leaving some flexibility. Use four hook and loop straps. Two on the top foam pad thigh end for extra support. One across each remaining pad to keep everything secure. Flip the splint over and adjust the sling position to provide optimal support. Now, take the size 3 hoop ring and fit the padding tube. Trimming it as needed. Thigh hoop cover application. Choose the correct thigh hoop cover, available in large, medium, small and extra small. Here, we are using a large. 
Undo the hook and loop fastener. Leave the smaller bar untouched. Smoothly cover the top of the rings to protect the patient's skin. Ensuring no wrinkles or bumps. Adjust as necessary to ensure full coverage. It's important to check you have enough material to cover the tops of the hoop. Now, attach the prepared thigh hoop to the splint. Since the patient has a right leg fracture, the lateral aspect of the splint should be higher than the medial. When attached, the hoop should sit diagonally. This positioning is crucial, as the Thomas splint applies fixed point traction, anchoring against the patient's sit bone, while the other traction point comes from the skin traction. Applying skin traction. There are two common types of skin traction kits. Adhesive kits, which sticks directly to the skin Foam-based kit, which protects fragile older skin. Before application, unwrap the kit and lay out the foam traction strip. One clinician should apply gentle traction to the injured leg while another applies the skin traction. Applying the skin traction. Position the traction strip along the leg. Ensuring the bony prominences on both sides are covered. Secure the traction strip using the included bandage, maintaining even tension. Avoid wrinkles to prevent pressure damage. At the knee, identify the top of the fibula head, outer knee, and avoid bandaging over it to protect the nerve. Leave the popliteal fossa, back of the knee, free to prevent pressure on nerves and blood vessels. Continue bandaging the lower leg.
securing it with tape. Upper leg bandaging depends on the injury pattern. Secure with tape if necessary. Combining skin traction with the Thomas splint. Two people are needed for this step. As one clinician slides the splint into place, The other holds the slings to keep them from shifting. Once positioned, clip the hoop cover and slide the foam padding over the buckle to prevent pressure damage. Applying traction. Take the two traction cords and apply gentle traction. To prevent external leg rotation, thread the cords. One over and under the bar, the other under and over the bar. Apply tension and attach the cords to the bottom of the splint. Secure with a knot, ensuring it won't slip. Adjusting traction with the windlass. Insert the windlass between the traction cords. Turn the windlass to increase tension. You will feel it tighten. Once at the correct tension, secure the windlass by wrapping the cords around it. Final securing for transport. For additional security, bandage the patient into the splint. A second clinician should elevate the leg to assist. Secure with tape as before. And that's how you apply skin traction with a Thomas splint.